Hey, it's Andrew Huang, and this is Weird Gear. Weird Gear! In today's episode, we're looking at the tapographic delay from 4MS and Matthias Puesh. It's a Eurorack delay module that has quickly become one of my favorite effects ever. It's so clever, it sounds fantastic, and it's really weird. weird. So the main event is this pad that you tap. Most delays just echo a sound at a regular interval, but Tapo lets you tap the rhythm of your delay. If you want super precise taps, you can have another module send rhythmic triggers to this tap input, but whether you use that input or the pad, you can tap a rhythm of up to three minutes, which I'm not gonna demonstrate. But you probably heard that the taps are happening at different volumes, and that is because of the next weird thing, which is tapography. <laughs> The velocity of each tap, so how hard you hit the pad, is also recorded, and so this combination of the tap rhythm and the tap velocity is what 4MS calls the tapography. I was in the amplitude setting, so it's affecting the volume of the taps, but we could also do some low-pass filtered taps. So the harder you tap, the more treble frequencies will be present for that tap. My personal favorite is the resonant mode, which puts each of the taps through its own super narrow bandpass filter with the resonance cranked. So basically honing in on one specific part of the frequency spectrum and then boosting it up. So Tapo has all this tapography information stored, which makes the time knob really fun. On a normal delay, the time parameter just sets the interval between each of the echoes. But with Tapo, it's gonna stretch or squash the entire tapography. Let's expand the thing that we just played. Or let's like squish it right down. Yeah. And as you can hear, moving the time knob while there are taps playing will pitch shift them. Now you can also change the amount of the filter effect by adjusting the velocity sensitivity, and that is done through the menu. Normally when I do gear videos, I don't really talk about menus, but Tapo has this really great and really weird <laughs> menu. It's pretty ingenious. There are these four categories that are highlighted and you can make selections to the right of them, but they all share the same buttons. So for instance, to set velocity to minimum, I would hold button one and then press two. Or to set it to maximum, I would hold button one and then press six. So in this way, you can really quickly and easily choose between five levels of velocity, four banks of presets, three different panning modes, and two global modes. And uh, I'll talk about all this in a second, but first, let's talk about what these buttons just do when you press them individually. So you've got these four banks of six presets each. You're always in whatever bank you last chose. And then just pressing one of the buttons chooses a preset. Let's hear this one. Okay, let's hear the next one. That one's so fun. Wait, faster. I love what this thing can do to a single sound. Okay, it's just super fun to play with presets, but if you turn up this morph knob, that sets a time between zero and 12 seconds that it takes to shift from one preset to another. So all the delay rhythms and velocity settings shift around until they match the one that you're morphing to. And you can totally start morphing to a third preset even before the first morph has finished, so it's just a really fun and fast way to mess with sound. Thank you. 
the last thing I'll talk about is the modes and the weird things about them. Uh, the panning modes are actually pretty straightforward. You've got mono or alternating taps or uh, randomly panned taps. But then there are these global modes, edit and sequence. Edit is the one I've been talking about, but if we go to sequence, now it's all about the preset morphing. The pad and the tap input no longer affect the rhythm of your delays. Now they change presets. And you can either go in the order of the presets or randomly or what they call random walk, which is randomly going to the previous or the next one. On top of that, in this mode, the velocity you hit the pad with now sets the morph time. So if you hit it really hard, it goes to the next preset pretty quickly. And if you just gently tap it, it takes a bit more time. So not only have 4MS and Matthias Puesh invented this weird effect, they've also come up with this weird UI that lets you control it in all these creative ways. So that's the overview of the tapographic delay and I wanted to leave you with this one final piece of music where I'm using a bunch of resonant taps to create this constantly evolving backdrop of sort of bongo sounds. Hope you enjoy.